Today, I want to tell you a story about how I spent six months working on a short film to submit to Buffer Festival, and it didn't get picked. So last summer, I heard about Buffer Festival, a YouTube festival that happens every single year in Toronto. After seeing the awesome lineup of creators who were attending, I decided I needed to attend. After three awesome days, watching countless inspirational films, and meeting some of the most creative people the city of Toronto has to offer, I just knew I needed to be a part of it the following year. So my partner and I set out to come up with an idea for a narrative short film that we hoped to premiere at the next festival. After stumbling upon this image on Instagram, I immediately knew the story I wanted to tell. We figured we had plenty of time to work on it, so we only loosely started planning it at that point. After the new year hit, I knew we had to start taking it a little bit more seriously if we were going to make it on time for the July deadline. So I started writing a script, focusing on the basic outline of how I wanted the story to play out. I decided to reach out to a good friend of mine, Jenna Vittoria, and told her I was basically writing the part for her. She absolutely loved the story and decided on the spot that she wanted to be a part of this project. The next couple of months were spent developing and refining the full script, looking for a location to shoot, and trying to plan when exactly to get production going. Since this was a passion project for almost everyone involved, it was pretty difficult to find a time when we were all not working to be able to start production. After finally coming to an agreement on filming for three days straight at the end of April, I knew we had to move in hyperspeed if we wanted everything figured out by then. During this time, my partner and I started becoming a little bit distant, and I started to feel like his heart wasn't in the project anymore. Turned out, his heart wasn't really in this line of work at all anymore. By the time mid-April hit, I was still waiting around for my partner to do his part, so I took it upon myself to finish everything that was left. For the next two weeks, I barely slept, as I had to fully finish writing the script in a proper format so that things would go as smoothly as possible once we were on location. I had to take photos of our lead actress that would be used for her character's Instagram feed in the film. I had to plan and get clothing for the lead's wardrobe and figure out when exactly she'd wear each outfit. I had to create a shooting schedule so we were efficient once on set since we only had three days to film. I had to figure out what gear we needed to use and any props we might need to bring or buy. And we had to plan out our meals for three days. This all, by the way, was with a budget of only $1,000. Kristen, my amazing fiance, decided to step in and help me with all of these tasks. So finally, with a few days left before our first day of production, Kristen and I were working around the clock to get everything done. It was absolutely insane. The next few days went as well as could be, considering everything was condensed into just three days. There really wasn't room for error here. After three very long days with virtually no sleep, we wrapped production and we were all very proud of what we had worked on. My partner, having been quite absent during the last week of planning, only really acted as an assistant while filming. So I was pretty exhausted and quite frustrated at the fact that we decided to embark on this journey together and I basically directed and shot the whole thing by myself. It turned out there was a very good reason for this. That week prior, my partner had been interviewing for jobs and actually accepted a job offer and told me only a day or so after wrapping production. At that point, we decided to part ways and I was left with what seemed like a monumental task of editing the film together, all within a couple of months, all while trying to figure out how to move my business forward on my own. There were times I almost gave up, where I really didn't know if I had it in me to complete the project on time. But I reminded myself what I promised myself. I reminded myself what I promised everyone who took their own free time to collaborate on this project with me, so we could tell our story to the world. So I carried on and fought through, and worked tirelessly to get the editing done on time for July. After only a few days into the submission window, after going through countless revisions, getting tons of feedback, and finally being confident in the film, I submitted the Buffer Festival, and the way began. Buffer wasn't going to let anyone know if their film was accepted or not until September 6th. When the day finally came, I was crazy anxious all day. I couldn't concentrate on work or anything else for that matter, but I had to keep waiting all day until 6.05 p.m. Although I honestly knew it wasn't a huge deal if it didn't get accepted, I just felt like I'd be letting people down if it didn't get accepted. Finally, at around 6.30, I got an email that read, Dear Alexander, thank you for submitting your project to the Buffer Festival. Unfortunately, we are not able to include it in our program this year. 
Please know that your project was carefully considered by many members of our programming team and a third party. The decision was incredibly difficult to say the least. Unfortunately, not all the wonderful projects we considered can be included, and we are forced to make many difficult decisions each year. Thank you again for sharing your project with us. We wish you the best of luck, and we hope to have the opportunity to view your work in the future. Sincerely, Buffer Festival. I felt absolutely numb. I really didn't know what to say or, or what to think. I told myself I wouldn't be bothered by any of this, but I was. After sitting there for a few minutes at my computer, with Kristen by my side, I decided it was time to tell my friends and family the news. So I began texting them one by one. They were all shocked and thought I was joking, but I wasn't. We spent the next hour or so talking about it, saying how proud we still were of the film, and then I received word from the guys who ran Buffer. It turns out, they all actually loved my film. It was just too long to fit into their programming. I know this shouldn't really have actually made me feel better, but it did. A part of me was just really happy to hear that it wasn't an issue of the quality of the film or it just wasn't good enough, it was just that it didn't fit into their schedule. Going into it, I knew there was a 10 minute limit for their films and um, not that I ignored it, but I just didn't cut my film down that short. I believe the film clocked in at around 16 minutes and I tried my best to really trim it down, but I really felt like something would have been missing from the story if I kept cutting it down. So I decided to take a chance and hope for the best that they would just appreciate the fact that I wanted to leave my vision intact and not just keep cutting it down. So it turns out I was right, it's just they couldn't fit it in their schedule. So the point of me telling you all this is, as a creator, I feel like it's important to not compromise your vision. You shouldn't just be doing something just because. I know I set out to work on this film for the sole purpose of submitting to Buffer Festival, but as we got going with production, the more and more time I put into it, I realized it became so much more than just a film to submit to a festival. It became a story I really wanted to tell. I felt like the message behind our story was very important and it shouldn't be compromised or cut down and trimmed just to fit within the guidelines of what is expected for a film festival. Yes, I could have maybe trimmed a few seconds here, a couple seconds there, but at the end of the day that really wouldn't really have mattered, it wouldn't really have made a difference. For this story to be told properly, it wouldn't do it justice to tell it in just under 10 minutes. So, as much as I was bothered by this initially, and I was pretty down about it for a while, I think it's for the best that I left Glitter Girl as is, and now I get to show the world the story as it was meant to be told. So, instead of premiering at a festival this year, I will be premiering Glitter Girl on my YouTube channel on Monday morning. I hope you all get a chance to check it out, and I would love to get all your feedback on what you think. Just always remember guys, don't compromise your vision, just keep doing what you're doing, and never forget why you're creating in the first place. That's what is truly important. Anyway, if you like this video, you know what to do. Do all the usual stuff. Hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring that little bell notification icon so you get notified anytime I post new videos. Like I always say, there's lots more cool stuff coming your way. A lot more information on making short films, doing creative video work as a career, as well as some cool tips and tricks and tutorials to help you better your craft. My name is Alex Perry and I will see you in the next one.